dealing with uncertainty. Today we have this important topic to cover because this is something that I'm seeing over and over again with people all around the world dealing with different types of, of uncertainty. And more of this is going to be coming our way in the near future. So it's important to learn how to deal with uncertainty. Why is it that we're struggling? What's going on in our mind to make it easier through these uncertain moments? times that we're going through. There we go. So thank you very much for being here. My name is Tommy Walker, the mining engineer. If you're watching on social media, hashtag live, that will be great. If you're watching um, replay, hashtag replay, uh, so that we know you're around, if you're enjoying this. If there's any topic you would like to have me cover over here, just let us know and we'll see if we can, of course, talk about that in future uh, sessions like this. So again, thank you very much. I'm doing this for free to get a uh, help out to as many people as possible. So I hope you enjoy this. Let me change a second the camera and we'll be going. Here we go. Perfect. There might be a little bit of delay. Sometimes I'm getting that. I don't know why. So I hope this works. So again, as I was saying, let's talk a little bit about uncertainty. What happens in the mind with uncertainty? So one of the things that we need to understand is that for the ego, for that part that we created to survive in society, uncertainty is in a way the enemy. Why do I mean that? Because the ego wants to be able to control, wants to be able to control how we feel, how we act, sometimes how others act, what are the things that happen to us and what things don't happen to us. So for the ego, for a part of us, right, uncertainty is the enemy because, of course, there are things that we can control and there are things that we cannot control. So it's important to go over this, right, to be able to dig deeper into the mind to understand what's going on, how is the mind working. So with uncertainty, right, if I want a specific goal, if I want something, you know, I want to achieve something, there is always a certain degree of uncertainty, right? Because of course, imagine that I want to, you know, get a raise at work, right? So I can put all my work in. I want some feedback at work, right? Get, get some of my, you know, colleagues or maybe my boss to give me some good feedback about the work that I'm doing. So maybe I work harder. I try something, you know, different. And then suddenly I don't get the feedback. So although I did the part of me, you know, the part that is on me, I did it, I cannot control what others do. So that part of uncertainty is the problem that the mind doesn't know how to handle. Why? Let's go deeper into understanding. What happens with uncertainty many times is it's going to trigger different negative stories that we might have in the back of our head. As I normally say, we have the conscious mind that is around five to 10% running the show. And we have the subconscious mind that is between 90 to 95% running the show. What we are not aware of. And there's a lot that we're not aware of. And what we're not aware of is was running this show. So if I have a belief, I'm not good enough. If I have belief, I'm not going to be able to make it. If I have a belief of any negative story that I'm having right now, that is in the back of my head, but is running right now as I'm facing this challenge, what the mind is going to try to do is prevent us from hitting those, of course, beliefs. And unfortunately, as it is the truth, we don't have control over everything we have control over certain things as i said my actions my the way i speak the way i act that's what i have control over me but the mind wants to go further to try to control others because look at this if i work hard i might be able to get my boss to see that and maybe offer a raise or give me good feedback or if i act nicely towards my partner i might get from my partner what i'm looking for love affection, you know, something that I'm looking for. So we need to understand these things that, again, I don't have control over the other person. So I need to remind myself that. 
okay, I can do my best, but then it's up to the other person what they do, right? So again, what happens in the mind? The mind says, okay, I want this, right? It doesn't start checking, okay, do I have control over this or don't I have control over this? The mind in many places doesn't think like that. It says, okay, I want this, so I'm gonna go do this over here, help more people do this, you know, help my partner, be nice to my boss, be nice at work, so maybe I'm gonna get something in return. So the mind is thinking that way. It's, it doesn't think like, oh, but wait, maybe my boss doesn't give me that because they're having a bad mood, they're having a bad day, they're, they don't like me, so they're not getting feedback. So at the end is, okay, why do I want that feedback? Why do I want that extra money? And yes, the mind can go down the road of, Oh, I want extra money because, you know, I want to give more to my kids. I want to, you know, I want to have a nice vacation for my family. So the question will be the other way around now. What would happen if you cannot give your family what you would like to? It's going to make me feel, you know, anger. It's going to make me feel disappointment. It's going to make me feel shame, whatever, guilt, something, right? Oh, I'm putting so much work into this. Why am I not getting the rewards that I'm looking for? So the mind goes down that road. So how do I feel? And write those things down. I feel, again, anger, disappointment, shame, guilt, the different things that I was mentioning. Next, why do I feel each one of those? I need to try to go deeper to identify why do I feel those things? Why do I feel anger? Why anger? Because I'm not getting what I want. Okay, so I'm anger. I'm angry at whom, right? I'm angry at myself. I'm angry at my boss. I'm angry at the universe. Who am I angry at that I'm not getting what I want? And I feel disappointment. Okay, disappointment. Why? Because I'm not getting what I want. Okay, when did I feel these feelings in the past? What could have created this feeling of disappointment? Right. Maybe in the past, as I normally say, the mind is going to go into the past and look for past memories and say, OK, wait, Tommy, you tried this back then and your parents were disappointed at you. You tried this back then and your teacher at school was disappointed. Your friends were disappointed at you. So it's a reminder of past memories. So then how do I feel? Why do I feel this? And how does this make me feel about myself? If I don't get the raise, if I'm not able to get the vacations to my family, if I'm not able to get to the end of the month, it's going to make me feel not good enough, not worthy. Whatever it is, the story you're telling yourself, there's always a negative story that you're telling yourself that the mind is trying to prevent you from confirming. So if again, I feel not good enough, if I'm not able to do X, Y, or Z, right? the mind is going to try to protect me from that. So when uncertainty comes, when I cannot really control the things that are happening to get to the result that I want, the mind starts feeling all these uncomfortable feelings. It could feel overwhelmed. It could feel stress. It could feel frustration. It could even feel low motivation. You know, although I need to do stuff, I don't want to do it because deep down, I'm so scared of not being able to do it because again, I don't have control over everything. I might not hit the goal. And so the mind is going to try to protect you from feeling more hurt. Is that making sense? Type a yes or a no in the chat. How the mind is trying to protect you. The mind is trying to protect you from pain. So uncertainty, what is going to do is going to trigger our unresolved issues our negative beliefs that are in the back of our head that are the conclusion of different things that happen during childhood. Yes, remember, the mind has everything stored. The past is not gone as so many people talk about. The past is running now in the back of your head. It is not about time. It is about our own resolution from the past. So if in our past, we did things that we're not, you know, uh, proud of, that we're not happy about, that we, you know, think it's not the best thing we have done, if we think it was a bad decision, we are beating ourselves up. When we beat ourselves up, we are, in a way, judging, criticizing ourselves, rejecting ourselves, creating pain, and the mind tends to shut down. 
when it tends to shut down, is going to do less of what we need to do. And we normally fall into procrastination to not doing what we need to do. So recognizing these things on how do I feel around uncertainty is going to help me go through that uncertainty. Because for sure, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if next month or this month I'm going to be able to, if I'm you know, self-employed, be able to make enough money. If I'm employed, if I'm going to be able to get a raise uh, with my partner, I don't know if my partner is going to walk away. I don't know what's going to happen for sure when other people are involved. So if we don't learn how to deal with our mindset on the negatives that are coming up, starting with our feelings, even with our behaviors, you know, procrastination, perfectionism, all those end up being behaviors, lot of, loss of motivation, loss of focus, loss of clarity. I speak to a lot of people that tell me, Tommy, I don't know what to do next. And when I see it from the outside, it, it is so easy, quote unquote, for somebody else to see what they need to do next. But they're not doing it because their mind is shutting down. Their mind is protecting them. As the mind is protecting them, of course, what's going to happen? They cannot see clearly. So when we learn how to do with our negatives, understand that our behaviors are the byproduct of our belief. Oh, sorry, of our emotions. Emotions are a byproduct of our beliefs. Beliefs, emotions, behaviors. When we are able to tap into those beliefs, understand why they are there, what things happened to us that created those beliefs, and we start working on changing the stories of reprogramming the mind. So then now we change the story, we change the emotions, and we can deal better with whatever challenge we're going through. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but yes, it's going to be easier. When we're able to understand how the mind works, it makes it easier to understand procrastination, understand perfectionism, understand overwhelm stress or whatever is a byproduct of uncertainty or whatever it is that you're struggling. When we try to push away, when we try to numb, when we try to ignore, that's when things get complicated. So I really recommend that you try to face what's going on, understand it, and that's how we're able to start making changes. We need to make what is not known, what is unknown in the back of our head, known. Bring from the subconscious mind to the conscious mind what is going on in our head and why we're struggling. When we're able to do that, we're able to make changes. So today was uncertainty, and it could be anything else that you're struggling with. Understanding that how the mind works is going to allow you to start being able to deal better with what is. Because again, if I feel not good enough and whatever situation right now is coming my way that is creating uncertainty, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a raise. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a part. I'm not going to be able to get this goal that I'm looking for. The mind is going to say, wait, wait, wait. It's worse. And listen to this. It's worse for the mind for most people to try and fail it's worse that than not trying. It's worse for the mind trying than not trying. Seriously. That's why so many people fall into procrastination. Because they rather not try. Most of the times they're not even aware of this, but it's the game the mind is playing to protect them. They rather not try because if they try and they fail, that is going to bring more pain than staying stuck and feeling pain. Don't get me wrong. But the pain of trying and failing is going to be bigger than the pain of not trying and failing. Seriously. Because if I try, if I get my best and I fail, I it is for the mind a big confirmation that I'm useless. I'm worthless. I'm not good enough at all. If I don't try, the mind can say, oh, I didn't try. Seriously, it can cover itself by saying, I didn't try. That's why it's important to understand these things. So going back on how the mind works is going to allow you to face these different challenges that we're going through on a daily basis. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that helped. Let me know in the chat what you think about this. If you want me to cover another topic around this, let me know. So thank you very much. Have a great week and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, guys. Bye.